All right, here we are with the Trailblazer HD tree branch pruning attachment. <clears throat> so we do have a hook to the tractor now. This machine, this attachment <clears throat> to prune uh, in our filbert orchard. Our uh, filberts are hazelnuts. We have 100 acres and uh, we're going to do a lot of mechanical pruning. We're trying to get away from the uh, pruning by hand uh, to speed the process up, a lot less labor. Uh, and we got a lot of blight in the trees. So we're getting rid of a lot of the old trees we've interplanted. And this is a tool that I believe is going to, to help uh, speed up the process and make it a lot easier for me. Um, so we're going the mechanical route a little bit more than we ever have before. So this is the first year we're going to try it. So this particular machine was, uh, I believe, fairly priced. I think it was actually a pretty good deal. I, I think we're in Oregon. The manufacturer is in Arkansas. And I paid right around $6,500 for the machine shipped. Um, so I think the machine was somewhere around $5,500. It cost me about 1000 bucks or 1100 bucks to have it shipped out here. So in my opinion, it's a, it's a great price. It is pretty heavily made, pretty thick. It's got a lot of good features on it that I can tell. We did order it with a hydraulic side shift so that we can shift the, the whole unit over. So we're not driving over the branches as they fall or we can shift it in so that the branches are coming in between the wheels, something, you know, we'll see how well the fine tune it, put it where we need to. That's not hooked up at the moment. We do have it hooked up to the tractor. It's not a permanent hookup. The hoses that I had on hand are a little short. I have a couple of them being made. That's uh, three or four feet longer. But for now, this is what it is. I just wanted to get the machine set up. And by set up, I'm, I mean, when you buy the unit like I did without the motor, there's some hydraulic settings you have to do. So the pump on this is uh, 10 gallons per minute. That's the max. Uh, other ones are five gallons per minute for the smaller units. It, he does send you an email with a digital book. I printed it off. As I went through the manual, it talked about five gallons a minute in the beginning and then the last few pages it talked about 10 gallons a minute. So I was a little bit not sure what was going on there. So I sent him a, an email uh kind of late at night it was probably seven eight o'clock our time and uh asked them you know this book is saying five gallons a minute in in the beginning of the book and in the end of the book it's 10 gallons a minute well he he was very quick to response within an hour which i didn't expect i i fully didn't expect him to respond until the next business day which <clears throat> would have been fast but he responded within an hour or so uh, this machine requires 10 gallons a minute it's the bigger machine and so the pages in the back of the manual cover this machine specifically. So the reason why I bring that up is because I bought it for two different machines. One, the tractor, <coughs> which this is a new tractor to us. We bought it exactly, well, not exactly, a month ago this year, or excuse me, a year ago this month. Uh, it's a new tractor to us. I think I got 150 hours on it. We've never had anything hydraulic attached to it. Uh, so this is the first time. It is a Case International 115A poultry edition, which is a little low profile. The exhaust is on the bottom. It's got a little hydro, a bigger hydraulic pump and a little more horsepower. So it's 120 horse. Uh, that's the poultry edition part of it. Uh, very nice tractor. Love the tractor. Um, so anyways, this is the tractor that we are going to use mainly for this attachment, but we do have a skid steer that I wanted to be able to use if I need to with the, some of the spots in the orchard are wet and I didn't want to have to rut it up with the tractor. Our skid steer is a track skid steer. Uh, it would make less of a mess running that. So I wanted to be able to use either one. Mainly it'll be the tractor, but the reason I say all that is, <clears throat> is in order to get the 10 gallons a minute to the pump, 
you have to figure out what your machine produces. So this one is 17.5 gallons per minute. The skid steer is 20 or 21 gallons per minute, low pro, uh, low, the low side of the hydraulics. The high flow is higher, and but you're not hooking up to the high flow anyways. So what you want to do is you want to be able to restrict the fluid, and so he has a hydraulic restrictor valve. I, I'm not exactly sure what the exact name of it is, but I'm going to call it a restrictor valve. And what this does is you're able to set the flow of fluid to reduce it from the 17.1 or 17.5 gallons the tractor produces to the 10 gallons per minute that the pump requires. Any more than that, uh, you're going to just put extra stress on the pump, wear out seals, pump motor. Uh, so they, they uh, have a recommendation of 10 gallons per minute, that's max, and they have a procedure in the manual on how to get to the 10 gallons per minute. So let's assume this is 20 gallons per minute. You would set this at 50% or just slightly under to get started, which should be right around the 10 gallons per minute. He sends this along with you. It's an RPM uh, sensor. You put the reflected tape on this. What we did is we, we set this at 40%. So 100% on this tractor would be bringing in 17 and a half gallons per minute. And if you shut it all the way down, no fluid at all would go through. So we set it at 40% <coughs> to get started. We started the tractor, got the machine running, set the tractor at the RPMs that we're gonna run it at, which I run it at about 1800 RPMs is where I wanna be. Came out here and in the book, they talk about uh, the RPMs that the blade needs to produce in order to get the 10 gallons per minute. And so we printed the manual on. And if you go into the manual, we'll just skip to the back here where it refers to this machine. Hard to do with the camera in your hand. So this goes over basically that, uh, about the 20 gallon per minute, split it in half, that kind of thing. And right here, it talks about the 10 gallon per minute, 1500 PSI should yield 32 to 34 RPMs. That's blade speed, and that's what you're gonna measure with this RPM meter. So basically what we did is, Set it at 40%, got the tractor running at the RPMs that we want to be running in. We came out here, we ran the RPM monitor, we brought this up to where we were getting the 33, 34. I think I went a little bit on the high side uh, because it also does have a restrictor valve here. Uh, so in the manual it talks about you need to have a little back pressure in the system for everything to be running at the optimum uh, procedure and so you have to turn this turn it all the way out at the beginning and then you turn it in the manual says no more than one or two turns is usually where it needs to go um, just to get a little back pressure so everything's working the way that it should that's how we did it we set it at 40% Got the tractor going where we wanted it to go, came out here, did our measurements with that, set it to where it needed to be, turned this a little bit. I'm not 100% sure exactly where we were looking to be as far as if we needed to reduce RPMs by how much with this valve. This is probably a question I'll have to send to him just to make sure. One thing I do wanna talk about <coughs> when you hook your hydraulics up uh, like I said, this is a new tractor for me, and so uh, we've never had anything hooked to the hydraulics. So when I first hooked it up, I have three remotes. Uh, when I first hooked it up, when I would run the machine and shut it off, it felt like there were the, the hydraulics were, were shutting the machine down. So the blades weren't freely spinning. It was like the hydraulics had set a brake on them and they were, they were turning. It was shutting the machine off quicker than it should have. 
So on this particular tractor, and I think our New Hollands are relatively the same, a little different configuration, but these are both dual action and single action remotes. To change them from dual to single is this little valve here that you just turn in and out. It's easy spin in, easy spin out. When they're turned in, they're dual action. When it's turned out, it's single action. This attachment requires the single action. By turning it to the single action, when I turn the remote off and to shut the, the fluid from going, it freely spins until it stops. It'll spin an extra 10, 15 seconds, where when it was on the dual action, it was like the hydraulics were forcing it to stop. It didn't sound real good. So anyways, I figured that part out. I had to go to the manual of the tractor, like I said, not familiar with this everything on it yet so the manual was pretty easy to figure out where, how to set that and to confirm that it was a dual action single action on all three remotes so i got that all taken care of that's basically how you set it up <clears throat> um, i have had it out you can see on the blades i have had it out a little bit unfortunately i can't put it up where i really need to because the hoses are a little short so I just took it out to try it. Seems to work well. I will be showing you how that works. We'll do a video of this thing in actual operation that we'll attach to this video so you'll be able to see it in operation. But when I was looking at this machine, looking at the videos, I was not able to find any videos on the setup. So I wanted to go over it a little bit with you. Obviously, uh, you need to refer to the owner's manual for specifics. This is kind of just a overview all right we're gonna head over and try out the original trailblazer hd pruning 